Turn up to this one, Worcester Bosch 30 SI, keeps tripping the RCD. So I'm gonna flip the RCD back on, go turn the power on. You can see it flashed on and went straight back off again. So we're gonna go back, see if it's tripped the RCD or the three amp fuse this time. Just the RCD this time. So we're gonna whip the front cover off. So we're gonna unscrew the control panel to get to the pump. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect the pump and the fan because they're the two 240 components. These are prone to tripping the electric, so now I'm going to turn it back on. Nope, straight back off again. So we're going to get into the PCB. Right, so with the PCB exposed, I'm going to turn the switch fuse spur on. I'm going to check for 240 on live. This is proving we got power into the boiler. I've disconnected LS and LR as well. That's the external controls. So now I'm going to turn it back on and see what we got. Right, well, it's not tripping this time. So I'm going to plug the pump back in and then turn it back on. So we've proved it's not the pump. I'm going to flick it back off, plug the fan back in. Try it with the fan connected. Fan's connected, turn it back on. Nope, still doesn't trip, so we know the fan's all right. So I'll let it go for its ignition sequence, make sure it fires up. It's heating up on hot water at the moment because LS and LR external controls are disconnected. So now I'm going to loop LS and LR together with a little link. This is giving the boiler permanent heating and it's all fine. It hasn't tripped. It's going for the ignition sequence. So what we've proved from these tests is it's the external controls. So there's a Honeywell hardwired room stat or it could be the absolute nest of wiring that's probably behind here. Yeah, I mean, let's be fair, look at the state of that. Those neutrals are loose for a start. So I don't even want to stick my fingers in there. So we're going to completely disregard all this. The boiler's got a separate switch fuse spur now from the other side. So we'll just get rid of all this and fit a programmable wireless room stat. I'll just wire in the receiver underneath. So I've popped the near emitters receiver underneath. So we're going to send permanent live LS, LR and neutral down to the receiver. I always crimp my cables. I think it's a little bit neater. So we've got perm live and then we've got neutral. We've got earth. We've got black LS to three and then LR on four. That's all wired in. Didn't have a new blank. So we're going to have to reuse the MT10. So we're just going to cut the cables off and pop it back in the front. So this keeps the customer from being able to touch any electrical components and also stops the MT-10 having the final say. So with all that put back together, we're gonna to turn the power back on. The customer will be happy for it not tripping the electrics anymore. They've had three electricians out to this. So basically just completely disregarded all those old cables and the old room stat. Now we've got a programmable wireless room stat with a receiver underneath. Turn the heating up, see the little flame symbol. You can hear the boiler starts ignition sequence, boiler fires. Then I'm gonna turn it back down to watch the demand go. Flame goes out, boiler goes out. Green light means go, happy days.